All right, Coach, uh, the team is coming off of a very busy week. Uh, the opening weekend uh, was down in the SAC versus Peach Belt Conference Challenge down in Aiken, South Carolina, uh, where the team participated in two back-to-back uh, -back days across a two-day stretch and then traveled to UVA Wise this past Wednesday. And specifically, going game by game, in the season opening contest against Lander in what was a matchup of two you know, ranked teams to kick off the season, uh, where LMU takes the close loss to kick off the year 65-60, to 60, uh, what did you see in that opening matchup? Well, I thought we did a great job handling, handling their pressure. Um, however, I, I thought you know we ran very little offense and uh, we looked uh, very scattered at times. Um, it's funny, we had 24 turnovers, but none of them came in the press. So we got past the press and then we'll make careless mistakes in the half court set, which normally uh, would be reversed when you're playing a, a type of team like that. So I think it's just, you know, us, we've, we've got a lot of new players. Uh, we're trying to figure out everybody's roles and we're trying to figure out our rotation. And, uh, and I think, you know, uh, there was some jitters and, and things like that. Um, but after watching the game on film, and I know this is going to sound so backward, but uh, after watching it on film and all the little details that we were not doing uh, and not being very disciplined in, I was encouraged because, you know, if you would have known our game plan and seen all the mistakes and, and watched, you know, again, how many, I mean, there was mistakes literally every single possession and we only lost by five. So, I mean, I, I am encouraged in that aspect because uh, we've got a lot of room for growth and a lot of room for improvement. And if there were any season opening jitters, they definitely calmed down the following afternoon as it was really less than a 24-hour turnaround for the team and taking on USC Aiken, who was hosting that event, and the team put together a wire-to-wire -wire victory over the Pacers, 79-63. to 63. Uh, Obviously, had to have felt you know, a little bit better to put in a more productive offensive performance in that matchup. No, I agree. Um, I just, I, we're trying to, again, get things going. Uh, for whatever reason, it seems like we we come out really well in that first quarter, and then it just kind of like tapers off in the second. And, you know, last year, the third quarter was really a great quarter for us, and we haven't got that going yet. Um and hopefully that's something that we can correct, uh, especially, you know, you can't, there can't be such a drop in your scoring in the second and third quarter. And right now we're trying to figure that out and, and uh, kind of there's, a, there's several question marks and we're trying to get answers for all of those. And, um, and so, you know, I think once we get it done, um, I mean, I was, I was happy with the victory, uh, but I still felt like in what we discussed with our team, you know, we want to use every game, we want to use every practice to get better. And I just didn't feel like we left Aiken getting better, per se. And um, and so there's things that, you know, we still got to go back to the drawing board and, and work on. And, uh, you know, again, it's just I'm encouraged because I, I see it every time that we're playing. We've got a lot of pieces, um, but we're just not using them very, like, correctly. And we're not putting people uh, in the – best spots to maximize their strengths and uh and i mean not that it's their fault a lot of that's me trying to figure out okay what are you going to give me every game consistently you know what are you gonna you know what's this player going to give me every game consistently and uh you know even if there's bad i would rather okay well let's not put her in a press situation she's not good at that but if they're not pressing sub her in because she's you know, can uh, makes really good decisions, takes care of the ball, uh, has great passes, can knock down shots. I mean, things like that, you know, I just wish there was um, a little bit more answers. And, uh, and it's just, you, I just feel like, again, we're, there'll be like a great performance and then, uh, you know, some, some several mistakes. And it, they're different mistakes every time. So it's hard to you know, figure out uh, where the consistency lies. And, uh, but I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm just still encouraged. I'm, I'm, anytime you can win, even if it's an ugly win, I'm happy with it. And 
in the second game of the season, the team, as you mentioned, somewhat trying to get the kinks out on the offensive uh, end of the court. Still was able to put up 79 points in that victory and then traveled to UVA Wise on Wednesday, what was the third straight uh, true road game for the team, and put up 80 points in the game, but unfortunately dropped another really close contest to the Cavaliers, 83-80. to 80. So what did you see in that matchup? Well, it's funny. I mean, I, I am seeing what you're seeing as well. Uh, we are able to put up, you know, good numbers as far as on the offensive end. But I told him, I said, we're playing the best defense on ourselves. Uh, our spacing is awful right now. Um, we're, you know, there, there's def defined spots that we're supposed to be in in our system, and we're not even close. We're all – we're staying right uh, a step or two inside the three-point line, which makes the, the defense um, – sag in and really clutters up the paint and and so you know these are things that you know we're seeing in film and we're we're correcting in practice and we just again it, it's amazing it looks great in practice when our spacing's you know uh, correct and then for whatever reason we go back into the game and you know you're standing in that no man's land where you're not going to get a shot you're not going to get your teammate a shot all you're literally doing is helping your defender guard you and her and so, you know, we're just trying to uh, make it, you know, make all these things come together. Um, it's funny because, you know, I think that a lot of our players, um, they're, they're used to obviously playing high school ball. It's a, it's a huge transition. And when you come on the floor, you have to read the defense. You got to know who's defending you, who's defending your teammates, who's the weakest defender out here on the floor right now, and how can we – isolate her how can we you know expose her and I I just feel like sometimes we're on the court and they never had to do those things before and you know you just get out there in high school and you're just literally either more skilled than everybody else on the court or more athletic or, or nine times out of ten both and so you just are able to play off just your your skill level and your athletic ability and it's not like that in college. You, you're going to have to think. And so now we're really trying to break things down and be extremely detail-oriented and say, read your defense. Is she closing out on you? Is there a gap? Can you drive? You know, what are the – like going back to literally just one-on-one -on -one principles and then trying to work that out and then from one-on-one -on -one reading the entire situation. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we've definitely got a lot of things to work out. But, I mean, you know, I – I point out all the negatives, um, you know, because you, you got to correct so much. But I keep telling them, I was like, we scored 80 points and we played the best defense of the night on ourselves because we, we clearly were not playing any defense on Wise. So uh, that's encouraging. We made 80 points and it was a very difficult, hard 80 points. And just think, once we get these things corrected, how much easier it will be in the future. Um, so, you yeah, know, I. Still, again, I go back to my statement before, a lot of room for growth. And one of the bright spots so far offensively through the first three games of the season has been the senior guard, Shea Coker, uh, who put in 14 points in the season opener against Lander, 24 points against USC Aiken, which is one shy of her career high. Also pulled down seven rebounds in that contest, which ties her career high. And I noticed looking at the box scores in all three of those games, she's gone three of five from three-point range in all three of those contests. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about it kind of in the preseason that Coker, along with uh, Carson Sims, the Griffith twins, Deja as well, they provided the leadership uh, to the team. And for a team that does have a lot of young players, uh, Coker has stepped up in the first three games to put in the numbers on the box score. Well, Shay, Shay's worked so hard. And um, I think, you know, it's funny, when you're that senior and you're realizing this is my last go-around, uh, the intensity increases every the importance of every game increases you know I wish everybody my freshmen my sophomores my juniors would all have that senior mentality um, because it, it if they did you know it, our game would be totally different um, but I just you know I mean Shay's just wanting to give it all she's got it's it's her last shot and and uh, you know my only gripe with her is I, I wish she'd get more shots. You know, I told her, I was like, you got to make yourself more pass available. You got to get open. You got to, you know, I realize that uh, people are denying you and they're putting more pressure on you, but you got to find ways. You know, if they're denying you, go back door. You know, keep moving. Don't stand still. And she gets it. She gets it. And uh, I just think that, you know, um, 
with Shay, there's so much confusion on the court <laughs> and uh, that sometimes she'll stop and stand because she's trying to figure out what everybody else is doing. And, you know, I, I, I told them, you know, at the end of the day, offense is very simple. Um, score, and that's the play. And, you know, if, if there's ever uh, when in doubt, score. You know, and, and or at least get to the basket or make an effort. Um, and you know, uh, Shay's Shay's she's getting it. She's she you know Shay understands she's got the green light, and I trust her. And and but here's the thing, in in her defense, you know, I know that not every coach would allow their their players to you know shoot quick shots and things like that, like you know Shay Coker does, but. Uh, Shay's in the gym all the time. She practices this all the time. So when somebody's putting in that work, why would you not trust them? I mean, she's in here and she's perfecting her craft daily. Um, and so I do, I do trust her. And uh, it's, it's been effective for us. Last season, the Lady Rail Splitters were feared across the country with their rebounding numbers. Um, last season, it seemed like almost every single game was overwhelming in the rebounding department. And so far, that's continued to the first three games of the season. Uh, Out-rebounding Lander, 50-37, to 43-37, uh, to 37, I believe it was, against USC Aiken. And for a team that doesn't have a ton of size out there, you're still able to, you know, really hustle to get those boards and outperform the other team on the glass. Well, I think that that's one thing that uh, our players are starting to come around. Um, I don't think the light bulbs totally came on, but it's at least flickering right now. Uh, the rebounding is so important. And, um, I mean, that's always going to be a stat that I look at first because I feel like rebounding just it's, it's an effort stat. And it's you outworking your opponent. And I feel like they're getting that aspect of it now. But the other aspect of it is if you can go ahead and position yourself when you're rebounding, you'll have easy putbacks. And we haven't got that part down. Um, and so, you know, we've had a few, uh, you know, sprinkled in uh, between all three games of a couple putbacks here and there, but not to the consistency that we had last year where, I mean, that was Josie's bread and butter. I mean, that's how she was going to score is having a putback. And nine times out of ten, she rebounded so well that she got to the free throw line, and that was another way that she was able to score. And so it's, it's just kind of constantly reminding these girls, okay, yes, you are rebounding, and so that is a huge step from where we were a month ago. Okay, so now we're getting that down. But it's also taking that uh, one step further in your effort and going ahead and getting great position. So when you come down with the rebound, you already have somebody on your back that you can go right back up with the putback, which is what's happening is we're coming down with the rebound and we're pulling it away from the basket and the defense is able to step back up. And then we're, you know, the putbacks that we had, we've made really difficult shots. Um, whereas before, like I said, you know, both Megan and Josie would have such good positioning that they just went straight up with the, uh, with the ball. And, you know, I think, um, I see improvements in that area all the time. And I just think that once the consistency's there, uh, they'll realize, you know, this is, you know, I'm, I can make it so much easier on myself and this is a, a, a way higher percentage shot that I'm making versus having to go around somebody or, or, uh, or trying to throw it over top of them or, or, uh, those sort of things. Um, if I, if I just get better positioning and I feel like, you know, once, once they kind of figure that out, it's going to get better. You mentioned the discipline of the team early on in the season. And, and as you look at the team's overall record, standing at one and two, those two losses are by an eight combined points. So, and, and you mentioned, you know, the game against Lander and UVA wise as well. Games where the team may not have played to their best ability, they still are in the contest right there until the very end. So definitely, so far, already just three games in, has been a learning curve for the team and especially those young players, you know, to in, in, the, in the last, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, when the game is tight, to be able to try and pull out those 50-50 balls or to try and, you know, pull away and, you know, try and get the victory. I, um, I just think that, again, you know, it's such a difference. College is such a difference from high school, and we're we're trying to just pound that into these you know new players. And um, what's bad is sometimes our returners don't know exactly what to say to help the the newcomers that 
the returners are now doing it wrong. And so, you know, we're trying to get everybody back on the same page and, and, uh, but you know, every possession is important. And, um, I, I don't like, uh, you know, and I don't think any, any player likes to, um, come from back from behind, you know, and I keep telling them, y'all, we are doing the work in that first quarter, but why are we letting off the gas? And it comes down to possessions. And, you know, if we're not scoring, and again, you know, my philosophy is if you go down the court and uh, you haven't scored and we're, we're, you know, relying on all our, all these jump shots and you haven't scored in three straight trips down the court, that fourth time you're getting the ball inside. You know, you're either going to, whether it's a drive, whether it's, it's isolating our post player, something, we got to be productive. We got to get the ball inside. We got to work it around. We got to get the best shot we possibly can. Because now you have this team's building up momentum, you know, if they're scoring and we're not. And we're, you know, uh, it's not very fun to miss shots and then go play defense and they're scoring. It's just it, it, you're, you're, uh, you're like on an emotional roller coaster, basically, uh, especially with females. And, uh, <laughs> and there is, the frustration's building and building. So you just got to go back. You got to be smart. And you got to really uh, maximize that possession and I feel like, okay, you, you knock it down and then, okay, you get a couple stops on defense and then you start making a run. And it, it's, you know, and I keep on telling them the, the game is – basketball is a game of runs. And if they're making a run, we have to do whatever it takes to stop it. You can't let it continue. And, you know, it's not that we're trying to. I just don't think that mentally we're aware. And I guess, it, you know, there's several things. Uh, even in the Lander game, there was – you know, there was 14 seconds left on the uh, shot clock, and, and they're inbounding it, and, and we're going into our defense. And I'm asking them, do y'all realize there's 14 seconds left on the shot clock? In four seconds, and the be- this is something that the bench should be screaming too, in four seconds we're going into our Vegas defense. And, you know, uh, I mean, we could get a shot clock violation. There's, there's different things that we need to be mindful of, but just even the game situations, okay, how many timeouts do we have? Have we used any? You know, if you, if you can't get the ball in and people are pressing us, then use a timeout. Don't, you know, throw it away. There's just several things that, it, and it's all mental. It's not from the neck down. It's it's the neck up. And, and you know, I, I felt like we made a huge step forward uh, yesterday in practice and, and getting a, several details down on defense. And I feel like, you know, again, um, I'm encouraged because I just feel like the team that you see right now in November – and the team that you see in January are going to be two very different teams. And, uh, you know, I just got to keep them encouraged and I got to keep them um, understanding. Let's just get better. Use this one day to get better. And let's let's get uh, disciplined in one, one detail and kind of mark that one off. And then let's move forward and let's get better on something else tomorrow. And then use the game to get better in something else that day. And then if we're continuing to do that, we're going to be right where we need to be at the end of the season. And the team will now look to bounce back from the close loss to UVA Wise at home for the first time this season, uh, taking on Clayton State and what will be a rematch of last season's NCAA tournament opening round. And so what can we expect in that contest against the Lakers? Well, I think Clayton State's a great team. Uh, they're very physical. They're very athletic. Um, I think they're going to – play a lot kind of like Lander it, it's uh the peach belt teams all are very similar in the fact that they really get after it defensively they're all very athletic they're quick not a lot of height uh, most of them press and and so that's I, you know to be expected with Clayton State as well um but I think it's it's going to be a good test for us and I think the girls will finally enjoy being back home hopefully that'll that'll calm some some jitters and and uh I'm, I'm hoping we pull away with victory.